you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to this demonstration for the Ruckus Analytics Cloud Service for Network Intelligence and Service Assurance. The videos in this series will describe the various views, services, and capabilities of the Ruckus Analytics platform. In this video, I'll be showing you the features and usage of the Ruckus Analytics Incidents Analysis page. Okay, let's get started. Here I am, I'm already logged into Ruckus Analytics. You access the Ruckus Analytics Incidents page by clicking on Analytics on the left side pane. The Incidents page will be the default submenu and should display automatically. Starting from the top right, let's go through the options for this page. First, we have the Time Selection Filter. It is used to define the date and time range for which the data will be displayed. You can select from predefined time periods, such as today, the last 24 hours, the last seven days, or the last month. Additionally, you can select a custom period by simply clicking on the first and last day on the calendar. Keeping in mind the longer the duration of time, the longer it will take for the data to load. To the left of that is the Network Filter menu. Clicking on this will open the Network menu to select a level within the Smart Zone hierarchy to view from what we call a Circle Packing representation. By default, the entire network is selected, which displays a Circle Packing view of all the systems in the network. A circle within the view is referred to as a node and may represent a cluster, domain, zone, AP group, or individual access point in the network. When you click on a circle, the page will automatically update to display data only for that selection. And the network filter will also update, allowing you to drill down even further. Clicking X closes a circle packing representation. Next to that is the category selection menu. Here you select which categories to display on the page. The three categories are connection, which relates to incidents with the client's ability to connect to the wireless network, performance, which relates to the issues while clients are connected to the wireless network, and infrastructure, which relates to connectivity between infrastructure devices, for example, AP to controller connections. Unchecking a box and clicking apply will refresh the page with only the checked categories displayed. The Network Node Details page shows information about the selected node from the network filter. Here you can see the cluster type, cluster name, that this is a virtual smart zone running 5.2 firmware, and that it has 14 APs and 87 clients. Switching back to network level, we see the page update, and now we're viewing 10,943 APs and a little over 12,000 clients. The severity filter tallies the total number of incidents on the selected node and lists the number of incidents by severity. And clicking on a severity level will toggle it on or off from its current state. We'll go ahead and toggle P1 to off. The incident timberline is a graphical representation of the number of new clients connecting to the network with the light gray line, the number of clients actively connected to the network with the dark gray line, and the number of clients affected by network incidents, and that's the blue area in the chart and passing your mouse pointer over the graph displays a pop-up with the raw data for that time period. Below that is the incidents list table. It offers a summary of incidents. Each incident is made up of several attributes. I can filter on severity by clicking on the dropdown, and under many of the attributes is a search field to limit the incident list based on the search criteria. You can click on the right arrow button to view more information about other incidents that contribute to the selected incident, and information about the parent incident to which the selected incident contributes. Each incident shows the time and duration of the incident. It provides a description, and if you pass your mouse over the incident description, it will display a pop-up showing likely root causes of the incident. You can see the category and subcategory of the incident, as well as the percentage and number of clients impacted. The scope and type show the name of the node and the level of the network hierarchy that the incident was detected. Clicking on the Details icon for an incident will take you to the Incident Details page where specific information about that incident can be viewed. On the Incident Detail page, there are several tiles that provide more details about the incident. We're looking at one incident, but do know that each incident type may display different information relevant to that particular incident. For this incident, the Network Impact pane shows the WLANs impacted, Operating Systems impacted, then clicking the right arrow, we scroll to AP models impacted, the software versions impacted, and lastly, radios impacted. Clicking the arrow again just recycles the scroll from the beginning. And if you pause the pointer over any portion of one of the donut charts, 
an information box displays the impacted area of the incident and the clients affected by this incident. And beneath each donut chart is a summary line. The insight tile of the incident details page provides a summary of the root cause and recommended action for the incident. The root cause may show several potential causes for the incident, and the recommended actions offer steps to take to aid in the process of correcting it. There's a vast database of root causes which vary based on the incident type, impacted area, and the reason codes. So this is only one example. Then, depending on the incident type, additional graphs may be displayed. For this low RSS incident, the first graph displays good, average, and poor quality clients. And if you pass your mouse over a plot point in the graph, it will display a pop-up with the number and percentage of clients of each quality level at that time period. The second graph is RSS distribution. It displays the number of samples of a particular RSS level measured in DBM, and again passing your mouse over the bar in the graph displays the raw data. The last item on this page is the incident info tile. As its name implies, it's just an overview of the incident. However, it does provide another valuable resource. Clicking on the View Details link for Client Impact Count will display a pop-up with each impacted client. The links next to each client can take you to the Client Details report for the client by clicking this link that looks like a pie chart, or to the Client Troubleshooter by clicking the link that looks like a line graph. Both the Client Details report and the Client Troubleshooter are covered in separate presentations. This completes this presentation, displaying the features and usage of the Ruckus Analytics Incidents Analysis page. I hope you found this information useful. And I hope you return for more of the presentations in this Ruckus Analytics series. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation.